Good evening, guys. Uh, my name is Nirish, and I'm proud to say that I'm the laziest among all three speakers because I don't have any slides, I don't have any notes. So I'm just presenting the sketch note that I actually took on the day itself. Uh, so let's get started. Hopefully, the technology will be kind to me tonight. Okay, so Dan Saffer. He is the micro-interaction guy, and he was the keynote speaker at the UX Australia conference this year. And uh, we had the privilege of listening to this amazing guy uh, give his talk on why thinking small actually matters, and thinking small can actually help you grow big. Okay, so Dan starts off his presentation by playing this really nice symphony uh, from the Avery Fisher Hall. And uh, in the middle of the symphony, someone's, someone's phone goes off, you know? Ding, 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 ding. And then, all of a sudden, the, the, the person basically you know, fumbles in his pocket and tries to turn off the, the, the phone. And he managed to actually silence the phone. Now that little small unit of work that he just did, that is a micro-interaction. So Dan basically said, said Design is not only about solving massive you know, world problems, not just about you know, solving world poverty or hunger or whatever. It's actually about thinking small. Some of the little details that you sometimes miss out in a, in a solution. It's all about you know, going bottom up. So what is a micro interaction? It's, a, it's the smallest unit of task that a software or any solution can do. And it does that one task well and only that task. And he also said, product experience, the experience of your product or your solution is only as good as your smallest experience. <clears throat> he also gave some examples of micro-interaction. The first one he gave was this Breville toaster, which had a button called a bit more. So if your toast was not you know, toasted enough, you could press that button called a bit more and toast it a bit more. And then you've got the snooze button as well on uh, alarm clocks. And the um, like button, you know, clicking the like button, it's the smallest unit you know, of task you can do on, on Facebook. Oops, sorry. <laughs> but it is a micro interaction that you can um, perform to actually you know, get, you, get to your goal. So then you've got you know, features. So what, what's the difference between features and micro-interactions? Well, features are something more you know, long and complex. It's like, you know, say, the, the shopping cart or you know, um, I don't know, adding a friend on Facebook or whatever. But micro-interactions are much smaller than that. It's, it's short, it's small, it's simpler. And they actually help to create signature moments on your products. So back in the late 90s, you had this thing called You've Got Mail. Does anyone remember that? You've got the old people in the room. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and that was a micro-interaction that was pleasing to the, to the user back then. But now I don't think anyone is happy about receiving uh, more, more mails. Uh, he also gave an example of this little um, device that they use in the hospital, which basically helps the, the doctors and the nurses uh, know uh, the status of a, a patient just by listening to the chime that it makes, uh, that, 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 that the machine makes. You know, they don't have, actually have to look at the monitor, they can just basically be walking around the room and there's just, you know, the thing chimes. So one minute, that was quick. Okay. Yeah. Types of micro interactions. So, I mean, I don't think they're actually types, I think I just wrote types, but I think they're more like um, structure of micro interactions. So, they can be triggers. Triggers can be manually driven or automatically system driven. So manually, for example, if you click on your iPhone um, power button and then you push the camera button, then it basically like you know kind of jumps up just to indicate to you that you can actually like you know open the camera mode. System generated triggers, for example, there's a little this thermostat called Netstat or something like that. Um, if you walk closer to the thermostat. The system automatically detects that you're there and you know, automatically adjusts the temperature for you. Rules, well, trick these micro interactions, they have to follow rules. For example, going back to that thermostat, it can detect whether you, it's, you're a human or you're a cat, 
And if you're a cat, it doesn't change the status. If you're a human, then it changes the status. He also gave an example of a fax machine, which um, gave out like three fax pages. But then if you say right now, if you have three pages of fax and you only have two pages of credit left, then it's like the first two pages are free, but the second the third one is not free, but maybe you can just have it this time anyways. So sometimes breaking the rules can be a good thing for the user experience. Uh, feedback, you know, giving good feedback. For example, MailChimp. Uh, if you type, the longer uh, you type your email, the longer the, the chimp's arm stretches out, and if you get to a point where the chimp's arm basically snaps, and uh, you know you kind of feel sorry for the chimp, and you don't want to write any longer than that. Forward to the efficiency of the leaves and some of the forward cars. Again, the, the, the more efficiently you drive, the more leaves that you know, it grows, but the less efficiently you drive, the less leaves you have. So it's basically you know, encouraging you to drive more efficiently and environmentally friendly. Um, loops and loads, again, <coughs> Is an example from Google Chrome where when there's a time for update, it you know, shows you this little arrow on the setting button. But if you you know just uh, let it go, forget about it, after you know like a couple few days or like a week, then the color of that you know arrow slowly starts to change from something like green to brown to red and you know, it's like a, something like rotting, which can indicate to um, the user that that something needs to be done. Okay, so, finally, the principles of micro-interaction. Bring the data forward. Don't let, you know, don't let make people you know, perform actions just to get data, which can be you know, uh, acquired by you know, not doing anything. So, for example, to show the temperature on the, on the icon itself without actually having to click on the, on the button. Uh, don't start from zero. There's always some base knowledge you can start from about like your users, the behaviors that they perform. So, and based on that, you can you know, create smart defaults as to you know, prevent users from actually having to take unnecessary actions. Again, you can use rules to prevent human errors. And also when you're talking to users, you know, speak human, add personality to the application. Use the overlooked, use long loops. Um, I was already clear on that, so I just don't know. Okay, <laughs> uh, so, Microinteractions actually help you, help your users, you know, help your application or your product go from being tolerable to something that the users would actually love to use. And uh, he ended up this talk by saying, think small and change the world. Thank you. Yay.